Hey, Tom here. Rebuildable atomizers and mods are a huge topic. I couldn't possibly summarize everything in a short video. We'll just take a quick look at the basics. This will continue as a series of tutorials. Rebuildable mods have two core sections. The lower part, the case that holds a battery, is the mod. And the top part, where the coil is located, is called a rebuildable atomizer, abbreviated RBA. We'll take a glimpse at two types of mods, mechanical and variable voltage, variable wattage, and three types of atomizers. Genesis, a top fed atomizer, bottom fed, and dripper. Drippers are also referred to as RDA. It stands for Rebuildable Dripping Atomizer. Genesis atomizers commonly use a stainless steel mesh that's rolled into a tube and torched to use as a weight. The standard build for the other atomizers use silica or equal wool silica as the weight with equal wool being more robust. All atomizers currently use nichrome or canthal as a resistance wire, and canthal is more robust. One reason for torching is to burn off any manufacturing residue. These materials are used in many home and industrial applications, heating and ventilation systems, appliances like toasters, coffee pots, and irons. Something that stands out with the drippers is that they do not have a tank. Instead, you would just add a few drops of e-juice between drags, Drippers have fewer problems with wicking since you drip e-juice directly on top of the coil, and you can easily switch flavors. A factor in resistance is the length of the wire. Basically, adding more wraps lengthens the wire and therefore increases the resistance. Resistances that are less than 1 ohm is known as sub-ohm. Resistance is important because it affects the power. It's represented with the equation power equals voltage square over the resistance. For example, if you're getting 3 volts from the battery and the resistance is 1 ohm, the power will be 9 watts. When the resistance goes up, power will decrease. When it goes down, power will increase. Power affects vapor volume, vape temperature, and flavor. Variable mods allow you to adjust the voltage or power up and down. Using the same equation from earlier, you can see how it's related. You can adjust the voltage, which will directly affect the power, or you can just set the power to a desired wattage. Just like the other tutorial where we use an Eagle C twist to show the difference between vaping at 3.2 volts and 4.8 volts. Variable mods also have a protection circuit against shorts, and most will not work with low resistances, so you cannot use it for sub-ohm vaping. Mechanical mods are basically a hollow tube with a switch. There is no circuitry in the device. However, since there is no protection circuit, you can build anything you want and it will still fire. That's why mechanical mods are excellent for sub-ohm vaping. Sub-ohm vaping can be dangerous if you do not know what you're doing. The battery could potentially explode. It's not recommended for new vapors, so do research about it before starting. Battery characteristics will be a tutorial of its own but we'll just have a quick look at the IMRs, what I've seen most vapors use. These are not your standard rechargeable batteries. The IMRs are supposed to have a safer chemistry. They come in button top or flat top. The number on top is the battery capacity, and the lower number is the physical size of the battery. Keep watching because we'll start to look at builds like microcoil, dual coil, and cotton builds. Thanks for watching.